Hadi Kassar lays it off quickly again. This time it's Pierce O'Neill onto the left boot. It's a good effort, but it's swinging right and wide. Nine wides for Cork in this All-Ireland semi-final. Three points between the teams. Yes, they're doing the right thing in the sense of taking shots from distance, but their accuracy is letting us down somewhat at the moment. It's an energy-sapping contest with nothing at all given or taken. Donegal, 12 out of 19 scoring chances. Cork, 9 out of 22. Here comes Michael Murphy. Murphy trying to get inside. Owen Callaghan fouling. And that's a free end for Michael Murphy and for Donegal. Yeah, we might have been complaining about hand passes and all of that in the first half, but the quality of the foot pass that time from Mark McHugh to Murphy, who showed very well, was just a delight to watch. And Murphy did the right thing, went one-to-one -one with Shields, took him on, drew the foul, now a good opportunity. Chance here for Cullen McFadden. He's already scored three times in this All-Ireland semi-final. He's been playing inter-county football for the last 10 years since he made his championship debut against Down back in 0-2. Lifetime ambition is to get to that All-Ireland final. Is it possible? Certainly looking good at the moment as Colin McFadden scores his fourth point of the match, his second from the fray. And look at that scoreboard. Donegal 13 points, Cork 9. And again, it's a quick kick-out. But Cork were doing it in the first half, the goal had a duck well net. And Michael Shields takes it forward far as Aidan Walsh. Along the sideline in front of us, Noel O'Leary. Oh, it's a terrible goal for O'Leary, under no pressure. And away comes Donegal, Paddy McBrearty lays it off for us, Michael Murphy being challenged by Dennis O'Sullivan. Over this side, it's McFadden, capable of doing damage from here. He's going to have a goal, but it's never anywhere near the goalpost on this occasion. Well, that's the weakness in the Donegal system. Sometimes they get so many players behind the ball that there is nobody with an outlet to give it to. And McFadden got caught in that situation that time and just, you know, a poor shot from a difficult, from a difficult angle. Paddy McGrew, Paddy uh, Kelly coming away with it. Lays it off for his Graham Canty. Canty throwing this into the sky. It's a terrible ball for any forward. Should be a defender's, but luckily enough it comes back to Paul Kerrigan. Sends it all the way back for Daniel Goulding. In the centre is Aidan Walsh, Goulding, having a go from over there. Over first, Dunnick O'Connor, trying to get inside this Donegal Cup. Three Donegal players around him, and he eventually loses possession. Donegal defensive game has to be applauded, and then they counter-attack. They were criticised last year, but they now play a far more expansive game, more enjoyable to watch, and it's paying dividends for a committed group of footballers under the guidance of Jim McGuinness, only in his second year in charge of his native county. Here comes Frank McGlenn, spraying the ball over to the far over side. Leo McLoon waits for the challenge from Graham Canty and then strides away. McGlenn is behind him. This is McGlenn. Back there too is Mark McHugh. Paddy McBurton. McHugh gone for the return pass. McHugh going full steam, but instead it's given by David Walsh. McBurton again. Steady shoots. Is this over? No, it's not. It's nine wides for Donegal, nine wides for Cork. But more importantly on the scoreboard, it's Donegal leading by 13 points to nine. That was a fabulous piece of play by Donegal. Tation going over and back, you might be said. Eventually, they got McBerty in the end of the move. But Donegal looked to be the dominant team at the moment, looked to have the legs in Cork and are just winning an awful lot of these individual battles. Mark McHugh surely fouled, referee's whistle is now blown, and that's a three for the Ulster champions. You know, we thought coming in here the Cork size will be able for Donegal, but it's amazing for a team that was physically, you know, that much more superior to Donegal. They haven't been able to allow their, their superior physique to actually have an impact on this game. But the numbers that Donegal get around every Cork player when he has possession is causing turnover after turnover. After turnover. Michael Murphy. An interesting point you make with Mark about size. If we look at the Donegal for forward line, McGrearty is six foot, Michael Murphy is six foot two, McFadden is six foot. There are no uh, slouches when it comes to physique, I can tell you. No. Here comes Michael Murphy. 45, outside the 45, he curls it. Oh, magnificent play by Michael Murphy. Great free into the hill 16 
and look at that scoreboard. 14 points to nine. And Cork, monster champions, under severe pressure here. Their cage has been rattled big time. Have they the character? Have they the wherewithal to break down this Donegal defence that are really playing top-class football? Carl Lasik coming forward from almost the left half-back, left cornerback position. Gives it quickly. Where's Michael Murphy? The layoff is for David Walsh. Back to Murphy again. Johnny Ball in control. Neil Gallagher. Some of his high fielding has just been outstanding, particularly in the first half. Here's McFadden. Score of four points. Back outside first, Michael Murphy. Score of three. Chance for Rory Kavanagh. Score of one in the first. Is it good enough? It's not. No, but interestingly, Kavanagh had all the room in the world that time. Donegal players are making the runs at the moment. An awful lot of the core players are wilting. They don't seem to have the alternative in their locker to actually counteract the Donegal kind of style of play. Nicholas Murphy now, I know this is coming in. So a change in the uh, Cork team, and it's uh, Donegal O'Connor that's going off, and Nicholas Murphy is gone to the edge of the square. So obviously Cork have decided they need to feed the ball in high and quickly, test out the Donegal defence because. The other plan of playing it laterally just hasn't worked. Hasn't so I would expect Martin Carney, correct me if I'm wrong, that when Cork now get the ball in midfield, they'll pump it in high. Yeah, but that's if they can get the ball launched from out around the middle of the field because that's where the problems are starting. They're being suffocated with the Donegal tackling out here. Just watch it, the Donegal, the way they are getting on top of the ball, uh, the ball handler, so to speak. Paul Kerrigan, cross field ball, ends up with Michael Shields. And he is the fullback to Nola Larry, who's been playing a cornerback. Colm O'Neill being the main thread up front. Back out again first, Michael Shields. Paul Kerrigan calls for it on the 45. Steadies and takes a shot. And that is a wonderful score by Paul Kerrigan. That's his second of the game. Cork are not gone home yet. Far from it indeed. And once again, it's that ball launched from outside the defensive screen that is the secret, provided you can kick it accurately. And what they have to do in order to do that is get one of their forwards into a loose situation and hope that he then has the courage and the accuracy to take on the responsibility and find the score. Kick out from Paul Durkin works out kindly for Carl Lacey. The support player is David Walsh, but he opts for the long ball for us. Michael Murphy taking on Paddy Kassar. Murphy strong on the ball, what's he going to do? Coming in to challenge his own Cadigan. Kassan gets a touch, but Murphy's physique is there. Umpire has his hand raised to signal that that is a 45. But Michael Murphy is a very strong player, and it took two court lads to stop him, and they were, I think, happy enough to concede the 45. Well, for a lad who's been out quite a bit of the year this year and who has sacrificed his own role for the good of the team, Murphy is leading by example, but disappointed that time somewhat that he didn't actually maybe, you know, finish off a move with a score. But he's had a big influence nonetheless today. Connor Cunahan and Gerald Sullivan, his uh, selector, perhaps thinking of other plans in the last uh, 13 and a half minutes or thereabouts this left. As McFadden again stands over this ball on the 45 metre line before a crowd of 55,169. An enthralling contest between the provincial champions of Munster and Dulster. McFadden kicks it neatly. And that is over the bar. Five points he scored this afternoon in this All-Ireland semi-final. Two from freeze, two from play, and one from a 45. And Dunny Gall are now making a substitution. Martin McElhenney, who was injured during the past uh, few weeks, is coming on for Rory Kavna. So a change of midfield for Dunny Gall. Yeah, Kavna, I think, has had a great shift. He's really, really given it all for the county today. But they've done this repeatedly, br brought on players around the middle to freshen things up and keep the impetus and keep the mo mobility at the high levels that they started out with. Dennis O'Sullivan. Getting by the challenge, laying it off far as Paddy Kelly. Looking around at options. Donegal are all back. I can tell you now off screen there's only one Donegal player in the cork half of the field as that ball is dropping in and it's dropping wide. But if you talk about blanket defense just at that moment, the only Donegal player inside the cork half of the field 
was Mikey Murphy. Yeah, but it's a credit to the fitness levels that Donegal have that they can get so many players back. But in contrast to last year, they get so many players forward then on the counter attack. And interestingly, up to today, they have averaged 15 scores a game. They have reached that number already with about 10 minutes or so to go. David Coldrick having a quick word with his umpires, Mickey Kelly and Sean Walsh there. A little bit of uh, concern about the Donegal defender. But for Jim McGuinness. I have to say he would be very proud of his team and their performance. And who uh, gave it all, one three Sigerson's, one in Jordanstown and two in Tulay, 39 years of age. In the second half, we're into statistics. Cork have only scored three points, Donegal seven. Oh, great catch. And Neil Gallagher laying it off to Martin McElhenney. First half, Walsh was the sub that scored. McElhenney fails to do it, Alan Quirk just at the verge there where the post meets the crossbar that's uh, the advantage of being six foot four now four counter attack Paddy Kelly getting inside Mark Hill lays it off first Pierce O'Neill hit a fair shoulder by Carl Lacey O'Neill back first Paul Kerrigan Daniel Goulding makes a little bit of space for himself it's dropping Paul Durkin is underneath it and he got a touch Parkman gets a touch but Carl Lacey is there Neil McGee is down injured. Paul Durkin telling him to uh, get up as Donegal counter attack. And away come Donegal. This is when they're really at their most dangerous. Kenny McGurty lays it off. First Frank McGlair. Neil McGee going forward. Floating one in. It's one against one here. Murphy's at the end of it. And Alan Quirk is there as well, the keeper. And Murphy fouls Alan Quirk. That's a free out for the Munster champions. Yes, but you have to admire the speed of the counter-attack that time. Neil McGee and Frank McGlynn getting up. Good crossfield ball to Murphy. A little bit unlucky to drop it. Down at the other side, we saw Eamon McGee, I think, being floored with a belt by, I think, Nicholas Murphy. 61 minutes played. Five points between the teams. Michael Shields trying to lend a little bit of assistance to an attack that is just not functioning. Carl Lacey, first to the ball. Colin McFadden in the middle of the field, stepping by, or trying to step by Graham Panty. Panty fouls, free for Donegal. Quite incredibly, Donegal have, you know, started the game at a high tempo. They have sustained that tempo throughout. That's a credit to their conditioning and to the work they have put in, put in all winter, but to the belief that they have in the system that they're involved in. Yellow card for Graham Canty. Uh, as he joins Aidan Walsh on the yellow card list for Cork. This was the reason why, as he came in and literally pulled McFadden to the ground. McFadden went for the free as well, it must be said, but anyway, it was a challenge around the body, so it's a free